All right, it is time for Lunch with Scott, episode eight. Eight, doing pretty good. Pretty good with eight episodes. Can't complain about that. That is definitely consistency. Today for lunch, we got free Schnippers at work. Schnippers is like a, you know, it's sort of a fast food kind of place, but there's only four of them. And it's super delicious. And it's amazing. It's the kind of place you go if you, you know, people come to New York, they go to Shake Shack because they don't know better. Right? They don't, you know, Shake Shack's the popular place. Schnippers is the place that people who know go for, you know, burger, fries, shake. Um, so we got free Schnippers at work. I was able to get my crispy chicken sandwich, fries, milkshake, honey vanilla milkshake. They put honey in there. I didn't get salted caramel because that's just too much. <laughs> too much for lunch. I had to walk off this lunch. Um, and while I'm walking off the lunch, I tried to think of what to do lunch with Scott on. I saw, I came over to this quiet area where it would be good to make a video and I noticed there's a city bike dock. So let's talk about city bike today. So, here's a city bike dock. The day pass is $12. It lets you ride 30 minutes at a time, but you can ride as many times as you want. So you could actually ride 48 rides. Probably 47 rides because you know you're losing time doing other stuff. But if you just did non-stop, you could do 47 rides, and each ride you have to dock the bike and undock it. And that's the reason they made that rule is mostly to prevent city bike from competing with like all-day bike rental places. So they would all go out of business if you just take a city bike and keep it all day without having to constantly dock it. And you could just go on a super long trip and then bring it all, you know, bring it back away later. Uh, so this forces you to keep the city bikes relatively close to, you know, the city bike docks. If you buy an annual pass, then you don't need to pay the $12 a day, you pay 100 something a year, uh, and then you can get bikes out for 45 minutes at a time, instead of 30, which is much, you'd be surprised how much of a difference the 15 minutes makes. Anyway, the way it works, is you go down here, you wait for the loud truck to pass by, and you pay your $12, and you get a code. The code will only have three numbers in it, one, two, and three, but there'll be a lot more than three digits. They're just, all the digits will be ones, twos, and threes. And then you take a little trip over to a city bike dock like this. This one doesn't have a bike in it. And if you have the annual pass, you can just put your, uh, your key right in this little slot here. But if you don't, you just enter your code, right? It might be one, one, two, two, three, three, something like that. And then it'll go green and it'll let you yank the bike out. All right, so let's go take a look at an, an actual city bike that is, I'm not gonna pay $12 today. Let's go look at a docked one uh, to see what the deal is. All right, here is a docked city bike. This is the newer version. I don't think there's any of the older version at this dock to show you, but the newer ones are better. Uh, some trash on the ground. City bike is a big, heavy bicycle. It's actually pretty comfortable to ride. You, know, you can adjust the seat height, uh, but you can't steal the seat. It's, it's locked in there, it's got fenders. It's like, it's fully loaded, right? It's like a tank. No one's ever been killed riding one of these things. <laughs> They're pretty serious. And if you know how to ride a bicycle, you can ride this. It'll be heavy and slow, but you'll make it. So the important features of the city bike are the basket okay, up front. Okay, you put your bag right here. You use the bungee cord, very important. You go over the top. Okay, you use these parts here. You can also use these hooks down here. And you uh, now your bag's not going to escape. If you forget the bungee cord, your bags are going to fall on the ground. That's not going to be too good. Okay. If you use the bungee cord, you can put all your stuff up front. You don't need to keep your bag on your back. The second most important feature is the gears here. Right? You have three gear choices. I usually keep the gear in three, which is the fastest and hardest to pedal gear, because that's as fast as you're going to get this thing to go. But if you're going up a hill or you get tired, you can use two or even one if it's a steep hill. Uh, you, people get over the Queensboro Bridge on these things, so that's a pretty big hill. You, know, you can use number one and get over it, despite how heavy the bike is. It won't be fast, but it'll get you there. If you got a bell, ding ding, you got brakes, and you got everything you need on these things. There's lights, there's lights built in right here. Yeah. Yeah, big old tires. Yeah. If you need to get somewhere in the city, the city bike. We'll get you there. You know, if it's if it's someplace that's a little too far from walking, but not quite far enough for the subway, this is usually the perfect option. Pretty much any place you can get in less than a half hour biking if the weather's good, city bike is the right choice. Uh, you know, but for twelve dollars, it would be have to be a situation where 
you're riding the subway more than like six times, you know, instead you just get city bike once. Alright, that's enough. That's enough lunch with Scott today. If you come to the city, now you know how to use a city bike to get around. Uh, it's highly recommended if you don't already have a bicycle. And that's about all I got for today. You can go and enjoy your lunch. Uh, you, you may have enjoyed it already, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, but I will see you with something much more interesting tomorrow.